Hello and welcome to your monthly update from the Covidence UK study. Uh, my name is Adrian Martineau. I'm the Chief Investigator based here at Queen Mary University of London. Um, so today I would like to share with you um, a really interesting trial that was reported just last week in the Lancet Respiratory Medicine. And a highlight from the outset that this isn't a study that I was involved with uh, at all. It's conducted by Paul Little and colleagues at University of Southampton, funded by the National Institute for Health Research. But I just wanted to highlight it because I think it's a really nicely done study. And hopefully the results will be of interest for anyone interested in uh, respiratory infections. So the study is called Nasal Sprays and Behavioural Interventions Compared with Usual Care for Acute Respiratory Illness in primary care, so that's in GP uh, practices, a randomised controlled open label parallel group trial. So let me just cover a little bit of background. So the study looks at what they call, the authors are calling acute respiratory illness. Um, but in practical terms, effectively, this is usually caused by a viral infection. And these viral infections, as we uh, have highlighted in previous webinars are the major cause of uh, GP consultations and absence from work. Uh, and they frequently result in the need for an antibiotic prescription. Um, the, if you have got a viral infection, isn't appropriate because antibiotics treat bacterial infections rather than viral infections. And we all know that um, using antibiotics carefully and so-called antibiotic stewardship is really important for uh, preventing the emergence of antibiotic resistance so that we can keep the antibiotics for the bacterial infections that uh, require them. So basically there is still a need for effective low-cost non-prescription so non-drug interventions to uh, reduce symptom burden and the need for antibiotics in people with uh, respiratory illness. So one uh, potential intervention here are nasal sprays um, and these work by modifying the nasal environment and the idea is that this could shorten the duration of acute respiratory infections or reduce the symptom severity or both. And broadly there are two strategies here. One strategy is to use a gel based spray that actually makes the nasal environment more acidic so it gives it a lower pH and that makes it hostile to uh, a number of respiratory viruses and could inactivate them and therefore shorten the duration of infection that way. The other is essentially a more physical approach. So using saline spray that doesn't alter the pH of the nose, but uh, acts to mechanically wash out virus. Now, in addition to these nasal sprays, there are other approaches to um, reducing symptom duration in upper respiratory infection that involve physical activity and or reducing stress. So there's quite a bit of uh, evidence around that physical activity might reduce symptom duration if you feel well enough to take that activity. But there's also evidence that stress can impact the immune system and might increase susceptibility to respiratory infection. So again, when we're thinking about non-pharmacological ways to improve the outcome of respiratory infections, trying to tackle these two lifestyle um, approaches to improving outcomes make sense. So this study was designed really to evaluate different strategies to reduce the severity and duration of symptoms for acute respiratory illness. And the design was as follows. Um, the investigators recruited almost 14,000 adults aged 18 years or older who had at least one underlying condition or risk factor for adverse outcomes from respiratory infections. And these 13,799 people were randomised into to one of four different groups. There's a control group, a group that received a gel-based nasal spray, that's the one that makes the nasal uh, cavity a bit more acidic, so a hostile environment for virus. A saline nasal spray, that's the one that basically physically washes away the virus. And then uh, in the fourth group, people referred to a behavioural web website that uh, encouraged uh, exercise and had some mindfulness um, content to uh, try and reduce stress. And participants were followed up for six months. And then at the end of the study, the investigators collected the number of days of acute respiratory illness 
uh, details of any adverse events for the treatments and use of antibiotics and compared them between the four groups of people who'd had the different interventions. So here are the results. So the first primary outcome was uh, days of illness. And you can see here in each row, we've got the different groups, the control, the gel-based spray, the saline spray, and the behavioral websites. And then on the right-hand column, we've got the average number of days of acute respiratory illness over the six months. And what you can see is that the control group had 8.2 days on average. The gel-based nasal spray had 6.5 days on average. The saline spray, 6.4 days, and the behavioural website, 7.4. And when the statisticians ran tests to compare that average number of days of symptoms between each of the three interventions, second, third and fourth row versus the control group, the top row, they found that there was a statistically significant reduction in the number of days for either of the nasal sprays. Um, but the reduction for the behavioural website wasn't statistically significant. In other words, that could have arisen by chance. But the difference for the nasal sprays, it was assessed as being very unlikely to have arisen by chance. When uh, side effects or adverse effects were compared, these were similar for the control group, for the saline spray and for the behavioural website, but somewhat increased for the gel based nasal spray. 7.8% for the gel based spray versus the control group having 4.8%. And that was statistically significant. So again, that increase in the gel based spray side effects. Uh, was deemed to be not due to chance. And then when we when the uh, investigators looked at uh, the number of antibiotic courses that uh, were prescribed to participants in the study, what they found was that all of the interventions were effective in reducing the number of antibiotic courses over six months. Um, and all of those differences were statistically significant. In other words, they were not to have risen by chance. So the control participants had 0.17 courses of antibiotics. Obviously, that number is less than one. That means that a number of people didn't have antibiotics. But overall, the average was 0.17. And all the interventions, the average number of courses over those six months was between 0.12 and 0.14. So like any research study, this trial has its strengths and limitations, but I think it is undoubtedly a very large and well-conducted trial. And the fact that it's large has a number of advantages. First of all, it's well-powered to detect relatively subtle differences in outcomes and to demonstrate that these haven't arisen by chance. And also the very large size and the design mean that the results are well generalizable to people, uh, adults in the UK and even in countries other than the UK living in the community. So uh, a well done study that's very large and has generalizable results. Um, in terms of limitations, the study had what we call an open label design. In other words, people knew which arm of the study they were randomized to, although the two different nasal sprays, I hasten to add, were not actually labeled. So they would wouldn't necessarily have known whether they were having the gel or the saline. But um, these sprays might have felt different. So they might have been aware of a difference between the, uh, between the sprays. Um, so that, and that could technically have impacted their reporting of whether or not they got symptoms. Uh, a second limitation is that um, swabs weren't done to confirm whether these episodes were associated with viruses or not. And if so, which viruses? But overall, the study was very large and very robustly done. So I think the results are important. So the bottom line here is that in this randomized controlled trial, which compared two different nasal sprays and versus a behavioral intervention, advice to use either nasal spray reduced the duration of acute respiratory illness. Um, headache or sinus pain was more common with the gel based spray than with control or the saline spray. Um, and both the sprays and the behavioural website reduced antibiotic use. And this could be really important in terms of identifying low cost strategies to improve our stewardship of antibiotics and reduce the emergence of antibiotic resistance. So I hope that study has been of interest to you. Thank you, as always, for completing your covenants questionnaire for this month. And I look forward to catching up with you again in August.
from all of us here at Covid It's UK, goodbye.